In today's episode, we're gonna go over some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. Get a load of this. Just I, a joke. After all these years, I've never met the Olsen Comedy. twins. He introduced me to them. I said to him, how do I tell them apart? He says, Ashley swallows. How is this fun? Is it true that you used to give Mary Kate acting lessons? He tell her, act like this never happened. <laughs> Bob Saget, who left and killed the girl in what 1990? Kind of joke and it's crazy, because it seems to be the theme with all these young stars. I may end up running off with you myself, you know. That's what Steven says. Steven? It's Steven Spielberg? Yeah. Hi, Steven. I love you. Second best again. Story of my life with women, yeah. She even talks about being at those Hollywood parties. Well, I've grown up very fast, and it's not very normal to see a nine-year-old at a big Hollywood party drinking. You heard that right. At nine years old, she was at Hollywood parties getting drunk. And it's crazy how it's such a common theme for these childhood stars to get institutionalized for acting out. Why would anyone joke about something like that? It just doesn't come off okay at all. Being a farmer, it's hard work. But sometimes they pull really odd, crazy stuff out of their fields. Sometimes it's objects. Sometimes it's living creatures. Take a look at this footage. It was captured by a couple of witnesses driving down the, the road behind a trailer that looked to be dragging like some sort of worm, tremor. Take a look at this footage. I have no idea what this is. Tell me what you think it could be. I don't know, that looks like a big fish or maybe a catfish of some sort, but that thing is massive, whatever it is. I don't know if maybe it's, it could even be a movie prop for all I know. If any of you have an idea what that is, let me know in the comments because I want to stay very far away from it. There was also an eclipse back in October as well, 10-8, there was an eclipse. I stared at it, I watched it, I watched it with my own eyes, nothing happened. You know, they always do these things. They're trying to feed on your energy. That's what it is. Think of your energy, your aura as currency. And the eclipse is feeding on your aura and your energy as a currency. That's what it is. So instead of you paying attention to the eclipse, watching the eclipse and having that download go into your body, you're put into a fearful state where you need to stock up in case something goes wrong. With the whole thing of like the, the fear is if something were to happen, it, it the stocking up and all the other stuff, you probably won't even matter. You're in a situation, you know, like back years ago, I was at NIU during the whole thing that happened with the and whatever else. They turned off people's phones. It was crazy. They actually turned off people's phones so that we couldn't communicate amongst each other. So if you think about what the situation is, uh, if things actually were to happen, you know, they, they, it's a very different scenario. And I just say that, and I'm not trying to present any fear whatsoever, because I've realized that all of these events are just to harness your aura and your energy. That's what it is. Yeah, I pretty much agree with this. I truly think that most of these individuals that do media, things like that, they're just after negative energy. It keeps people suppressed. It keeps people in a really negative mindset and it keeps them from moving forward. So the more that they press negative news, the more it feeds this entity that absorbs negativity, whether you want to call that Satan, demons, or just greedy humans. That I truly do believe is really what's happening. I do think that there's someone out there or some higher powers out there that are feeding off of our negativity. I've always believed that. What do you guys think? Do you think that there's something else going on behind it all? Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And if you look at this graph here, you'll see that 30% of the viewers that watch my videos are actually subscribed to the channel, while 70% of the viewers that watch my videos are not subscribed, but keep coming back for more of my content. So to the 30% that are subscribed to the channel, thank you so much. And to the 70% that are not subscribed, I still appreciate you nonetheless. 
Thank you so much for watching. Americans are not okay. For the first time ever, a Gallup poll revealed that America is no longer in the top 20 happiest nations. And it's being said young people are to blame, because of course they are. In fact, if you account for all Americans, the United States ranks 23rd in global happiness. But if you account for only respondents under age 30, the United States plummets all the way down to 62nd place. Reason should not surprise anyone who's paying attention. The United States is one of the only industrialized economies with no universal health care, no child care, no tuition-free college, and no paid family leave. Now that's something that the top three happiest countries all have in common. And young Americans are decidedly less hopeful after years of disruption, corruption, and a straight-up insurrection. Is there any way we can reverse this trend of young Americans feeling hopeless? Tell me your thoughts in the comments and follow for more information. I'm not gonna lie, I'm considered a young, a young American, I'm in my 30s, and I'm pretty happy here in America. I, I actually love this country, I think it's worked for me personally very well. I do not really have any major complaints other than the basic complaints of paying taxes and things like that, but overall, I think the country is pretty good in comparison to some other countries. Now, it could be better, of course, but it's not going to lower my happiness out of it because I'll just try to save up enough money to go to another country to take a vacation and get a little bit more of that happiness that I'm lacking from here, I guess, but that's never really the case for me. I'm personally really happy being here in America. But I understand the people that are not, because it is stressful sometimes. Microwaving the Embassy Like an ooey-gooey hot pocket of diplomacy, countries have been using secret microwave technology to cook the hell out of one another's diplomats for decades. And tomorrow, 60 Minutes will be broadcasting an expose of these incidents being perpetuated by mysterious foreign adversaries. But not before I do it first, and actually tell you the truth. The media is now calling these anomalous health incidents, formerly Havana Syndrome, but both those terms are bullshit meant to hide the truth. You see, what the media is pretending is a new phenomenon isn't. In fact, I'm going to show you some once classified intelligence documents talking about similar attacks that go back as far as the 1950s. In the early 1960s, an electronics technician at the U.S. Embassy in Moscow found some mysterious radiation that was being beamed directly at the embassy. And this kicked off some secret projects under the CIA, ARPA, and military intelligence to study what was going on. The top secret projects were named Project Pandora, Project Bizarre, Project Tums, Project Mutz, and Project Big Boy. And they sought out to find why the U.S. Embassy was being bombarded with microwave radiation and what effects it was having on the personnel, and why those personnel had the highest cancer rate in the world. This problem was being leaked to the public as early as this February 7, 1976 article in the Los Angeles Times. Titled, The Russ Use Radiation Beams to Bug the American Embassy, it talks about how the U.S. ambassador had to make his team aware that there was a great risk for leukemia, cataract, psoriasis, skin cancer, and psychological effects, and that those effects were greatest in the pregnant wives of the staffers. To anybody that heard the blips in the news about the so-called Havana Syndrome, this should sound pretty familiar because it's the same thing. The media tries to downplay the Havana Syndrome effects, make them sound like they're just theoretical, but nothing could be further from the truth. In 1969, experts from around the world were invited to the Medical College of Virginia for a conference to talk about these effects. And there, Dr. Karel Marha of Czechoslovakia declared that microwave bioeffects included pain in the head and eyes, fatigue and overall weakness, dizziness and vertigo, poor night's sleep, irritability, fear, hypochondria, tension, depression, inhibition of intellectual functions, and decreased memory. And this was verified in the U.S. Navy's Project Big Boy, where they took a portion of the personnel on a ship, bombarded them with microwaves, kept the rest of the ship as a control group, and they monitored the health and psychological effects of what happened to the people getting bombarded with the microwaves. And they found a host of negative psychological and cognitive effects in people that were under the influence of the technology. And these people became much more susceptible to negative programming or influence. Now, interestingly, the bombardment of the U.S. Embassy was said to have started as early as 1953. And meanwhile, 
Halfway around the world, in the Korean conflict, POWs and soldiers were coming back reporting that they had been under the influence of similar devices. One of these devices was the Russian Lita machine that was studied by Dr. Ross Aidy. And what the POWs were reporting is that they were put under the influence of this machine to write false statements and that they had no desire to withstand that kind of programming, that they became lethargic and zombie-like. These devices are classified as electrosleep devices in Russian literature. Now, when this technology made it over to the United States, it was seeded out into the military and then into private industry to do testing on people. And it transformed into things like Hemisync. When Bob Monroe got his patent on Hemisync, it was classified as a method for inducing sleep. Brainwashing. You see, if the government or military gives money to a private organization to do testing on the public, then there's no oversight and no liability for them. When these POWs who were under brainwashing were brought back in, they were studied extensively and given psychological treatment, but not necessarily to make them better. One of the earliest doctors that was working with this population was none other than Dr. Lewis Jollyon West of the CIA, infamous for his role key role in MKUltra, and he definitely got some ideas from these unfortunate victims which he used in his own experiments. Jolly West had a protege that worked with him on these veterans at the CIA, and that person was none other than Dr. Christopher Kit Green. If you're familiar with my earlier videos, you might remember Dr. Green as the CAA spook scientist who runs around doing brain scans on people who have had anomalous experiences and UFO encounters, like my friend Chris, who was the guard at Skinwalker Ranch and has lasting health problems because of it, and Thomas Winterton, who had anomalous head trauma from his time at Skinwalker Ranch. Now, Winterton was studied by Dr. Gary Nolan, and Gary Nolan let the cat out of the bag that it was a state actor that actually did that and not a skinwalker and dr green is all involved with all this in fact he's been the ringleader for so much of it for decades and as i mentioned dr green is in cahoots with dr gary nolan studying the ufo phenomena and these mysterious illnesses from the phenomena they're calling interference syndrome which may as well just be havana syndrome which may as well just be the moscow signal syndrome it's almost like all this paranormal stuff and skinwalkers and psychic phenomena esp and ufos are being used as a blind to cover up the testing of electromagnetic weaponry and non-lethal weapons and let's not forget the old rub that they're only non-lethal weapons today. Five years down the road when you've got brain damage or leukemia, well, that's, a, that's another story. The tie-in with UFOs goes all the way back to Dr. Andrea Puharish, who, like Jolly and West, was an MK Ultra scientist. Puharish was an expert in electromagnetic mind control, having patented several devices. He was the person who discovered and popularized psilocybin mushrooms. He was the mentor of Bob Monroe before Monroe started the Monroe Institute and did all his gateway crap. And he was doing a ton of human experimentation, programming his space kids, his star kids, with hypnosis uh, under the guise of trying to awaken their ESP and psychic ability, but that was just a cover for him trying to create multiple personalities to program. Puharish was a real creep, but he knew what was going on behind the scenes. And before the end of his life, he wrote an amazing tell-all book that was never officially published. I have a copy of it here. And in Chapter 1, it says, Global Magnetic Warfare is here. Chapter 7, Global Magnetic Mind Control is here. And this book details how Nikola Tesla's technology was taken, usurped, turned into mind control and weather modification and electromagnetic warfare technology, and how it's been covered up and hidden from you ever since. Puharish was close friends and colleagues with John Hayes Hammond Jr., who was one of Nikola Tesla's original protégés. A radar specialist invented a lot of the radar technology used in World War II, and Puharish was working with Jr. to create electromagnetic mind control technology for the Army and Navy back in the era of World War II before the Russians ever got their hands on it, and Puharish knew the inside story of what was really going on with these technologies. If you'd like a copy of this book, I'm republishing it now, and you can do a pre-order on our website.
When these attacks and the Russian woodpecker and Eugene frequency were at their height, Puharish was working with none other than Dr. Bob Beck to figure out what was being done to people's minds. If you've seen some of my earlier videos, Dr. Beck spoke at length about these. These are protective devices that were worn by diplomats in West Germany against these electromagnetic weapons. And this, my Halo Pulsar, is an updated and modernized version of this older technology. Beck and Puharish knew 50 years ago that there are technologies to protect you from these unseen influences. And Beck did an amazing video called Electromagnetic Ghost Busting that was never put on the internet before until now. If you'd like to watch the full video for the first time on the internet, it's on my website. To think that they are microwaving us is kind of scary because it makes me wonder. When you get those those ringing in the ears and we consider it a download, who's to say it's not because of the radio waves that are going through the air and it's just them scrambling our brains, you know? But now, almost every other day, I'm getting the ringing in the ears and it makes me wonder, are we getting fried from the radio signals? Are we being microwaved? Am I being cooked? <laughs> Let me know your thoughts on this because I feel like there might be something onto this, but it could just be overthinking and it's not radio waves or microwaves that are frying my brain, but it could be. See the clouds going around it. You see it? Hold on, let me zoom out. So y'all know it ain't just the camera. It's not the camera, man. It's not the camera. There is something in front of the sun. You see the clouds. Let's let's go back out here. But you still see the circle. Stop playing with me. Stop playing with me. I definitely see what this individual is talking about. Now, I'm not sure if that's just the sun he's seeing through the clouds, even though it looks so tiny uh, compared to the big sun overexposure that you can see around it. But, you know, the sun is supposedly 90 some odd million miles away. But... I don't know. That is a good shot. It could be a UFO. It could be a cloaked UFO hiding in the clouds and you can just see it just right through when the sun beams through it. Or like I said, it's just a filtered out sun because the clouds are really dense and that's just allowing you to see the little tiny sun blot that's just right there. That's kind of my guess. What do you guys think it is? So you know how I have this, uh, the alien glass that you can put the lens up to your phone and then see the invisible UFOs. And I've been covering it on my channel, invisible UFOs. You can't see them unless you put a plexiglass over your phone. Okay, so check this out. During the eclipse, everybody's gonna have a lens over their phone and trying to post, you know, and you might see many UFOs because apparently we're living in a, like, the we're living in the shadow of a legacy program that's been happening for over 50 years. That's the UFO programs from America. It started in Germany. That's why we brought all them guys here. Anyway, you're going to get this, but if you see what they're doing right here, they're disrupting the cell service just in case. I'm not putting this guy on blast. His name's uh, Mix Master XL. And he basically said that the agreements are all there. Every cell phone provider has agreements with the CIA and uh, America, and they will disrupt service to protect the invisible UFO program, bro. Our invisibility research in terms of technology. Like I mean, it couldn't get any sweeter. I mean, the nectar, dude, I could taste it. These guys, they would, they, they'd do anything to hide this invisible technology, man. And uh, I keep doing everything I can to expose it, so. I've seen the video of that individual was flipping between a, a glass that he apparently got from a crashed ship or something like that. And once you put it over the camera lens, you can actually see the UFOs. I really like those videos, whether they're real or fake, I really don't know. I kind of have a feeling they're fake, but I do like those videos. I like the concept that maybe it does require a certain type of lens or glass for us to see the invisible objects in the sky, whether they're man-made or not. 
I, I do like that idea. But if that's the case, why are we hiding in plain sight? Why are they doing it just over cities and things like that? Why not just over their military base and to practice in their area? Why are they going out into the public where it's a risk for them to be caught until they perfected their technology? That's what kind of makes me think that it's not real, it's not military, maybe it is extraterrestrial or interdimensional, because I feel like the military tend to keep their stuff in designated areas and not normally in where public the public is. If you plan on sleeping tonight, please don't watch this. Also, if you just smoked a large bowl of cereal, please don't watch this. Put it in your saved folders for later, when you got time. Because you're going to need a lot of time to think about stuff. Because this is about to fuck your whole world up. Okay, so one thing we need to be honest about as a species is that we don't really understand death. Or if it even happens at all. And I know what you're thinking. Sure we do. We bury them. There's plenty of dead people. But we don't really know what happens or where that person or their consciousness went. But science has a lot of uh, weird discoveries that might all add up with the advancement of technology and might give us some answers as to what happens after we die. And we're throwing around this idea of uploading our consciousness to the cloud and downloading it back into a new body or a cloned body or a robot. What if that's what we're doing? What if that's what the person who died, what if that's what they did? A lot of us are also considering the idea that reality might be a highly intelligent virtual reality simulation. So if it's highly advanced technology, wouldn't it be something that works a little bit like uploading your mind to a cloud and downloading it back instantly? You're not doing it, it's highly advanced technology, it's all automatic. And also parallel universes is, is a thing, but why? That could explain where the consciousness goes. You see, you don't die, but maybe in this lifetime you didn't quite make it, you weren't really going anywhere. So you transferred over into a parallel universe and kept going. If this is a simulation, we're inputting data here to try and find out the outcome. And if the simulation is giving us nothing, we might as well transfer over into another simulation in another parallel universe. So what I'm saying is that in the future, when we experience virtual reality simulations that are so close to reality that that's what we understand that reality really is, and when we start to uploading our minds to the cloud and re-downloading them down into a highly advanced robotic structure or another cloned body, are we going to understand that there is no such thing as death? Are we going to be able to transfer our minds over into a parallel universe? Because dying and chilling in the clouds with Jesus doesn't make any sense. Doesn't really solve anything or have a purpose. But transferring into a universe until you keep going, until you ascend and figure out the question of all questions, which is what you're here to do, who am I, makes a lot more sense. So there's no such thing as death, possibly. They just transferred over into a parallel universe and kept going. Bon voyage, see you on the other side. If you watched this before bed, I warned you. Good night. I mean, to her last remark about dying and chilling in the clouds with God and Jesus, that would be a form of moving on to the next life, right? Like, there's no end after that. It's just now you're in a better place. This was a pretty good topic, but I do have my own theories about death and how we experience it. I like to believe that, that the DMT in our pineal gland releases when we die, and it releases so fast that we experience the high that it produces. And my theory that I like to go off of, depending on how guilty or clean your conscience is, is how good of a trip you will have while you are dying or when you're past. Because once that DMT activates, all of your thoughts, all your conscious feelings go straight to it. And that is what determines your hallucinogenic trip to the quote unquote afterlife. Bad conscious, you live in hell. That's a bad trip. Good conscious, you're in heaven. That's a good trip. And this trip can feel like it's lasting for an eternity because you're now no longer alive to control that balance, a part of energy now. That's a theory that I have on it. Whether it's a good one or not, I don't know, but it is one that I like to, to think about because we do have DMT in our brain. We do have certain levels of it that gets produced. So why wouldn't I factor that into it? What do you guys think about this? Do you think that death is an illusion and there is other parts of life after death not considered 
not necessarily talking about heaven or hell, but actually a life after earth, whether that's reincarnation or transferring to a different form of reality. Let me know what you think about this. How did they know about the speed of light in ancient times? No. <laughs> For centuries, most people believed that light was instantaneous. They had no idea that this was a graveyard. These lights we see are hundreds if not thousands of years old. Galileo had his suspicions and tried proving that light has a speed by uncovering a lamp from a distance and his assistant uncovering his as soon as he saw it. But when light moves at 186,000 miles per second, that's not something even a Formula One driver has the reflexes for. In 1676, Danish astronomer Ole Romer wasn't even looking for the speed of light. He was measuring the orbit of Jupiter's moon Io. Io's orbit is just under two days, meaning that it eclipses Jupiter pretty frequently. Romer timed this eclipse over the course of years, and noticed that when Earth, which is this orbit here, was closer to Jupiter, the eclipse with Io occurred about 11 minutes sooner, compared to when Earth was farther away. He realized that Io's light was taking time to reach Earth. Light must have a speed. He calculated 136,701 miles per second, which is a bit wrong. Still impressive when all you have is this. And it proved that the night sky is really not what it seems. The simple fact of just standing across the mountain pass and just shining a light to see how long it takes for the light to reach your eyes is pretty clever when you do not have no other forms of technology to measure out how light travels. Very fascinating stuff to me. Revolution. Revolution is required for us to renegotiate our position. This is no disrespect to you, friend, but I find it very concerning and even disturbing that when I talk about the injustices of the world, people essentially tell me, well, that's just the way it is. Well, the reason that it is the way it is is because we are not stern in our negotiations. When I say something like, we don't have to pay taxes anymore because we are no longer being adequately compensated with representation, which was promised upon paying those taxes, and people tell me things like, well, they'll just garnish it out of your check. Well, have fun going to jail. It's insane to me. Y'all are treating the government as if they're somebody special, as if they're above the law. If you made a deal with another individual person and you held up your end of the deal and then they didn't, right, you'd take them to civil court or you'd call the police based on how bad the offense was. But when the government does it to you and someone like me says something, y'all make fun of me like I'm the crazy one. The sovereign citizen supersedes the state. For anyone who's having a hard time wrapping their heads around the fact that we are the employers of the government, we are the boss of the government, just read The Leviathan by Thomas Hobbes. For any of you who have watched Game of Thrones, you probably remember that incredible scene between Cersei and Baelish, where Baelish claims that information or knowledge is power, and Cersei explains to him that power is power. The reason the government can garnish money out of your check and throw you in jail if you don't pay your taxes is not because you did something wrong. It's because they have explicit power. Explicit power which they now abuse, which they were never supposed to abuse. And if you read The Leviathan by Thomas Hobbes, you'll understand how this works. Governments are fundamentally what are called sovereign coercive powers. Governments exist because a community of people enter into an agreement with some sort of magistrate. It might have been a group of wealthy merchants who bought some land, bought some materials, built a castle, and invited some people to move in. Those merchants who have now become nobles and eventually will become royalty and make up all the royal families that exist in the world today, if you move into our area of influence, we will provide you with security, defense, some land to grow food, so you'll never have to worry about your basic needs or being raided by barbarians. In return, we ask that you provide us with a little bit of your equity, whether it's your work, your time, some of your currency through taxes, and some of your strapping young sons to pick up spears when the castle gets sieged by enemies. And this is essentially the agreement. This is the formation of the state, and it's the only reason that it exists. And the state can only remain stable if both people hold up their end of the bargain. The issue we're dealing with in today's society is the state has broken away in two forms, knowledge and power. You see, they hired all the best scientists, bought out all the ones that wouldn't work for them, and any that were left that would give the information to the public, well, you know what happens to them. And then they started discovering all the mysteries of the universe, which would empower them more. 
which of course gave them ultimate military power and an insane amount of explicit force, which is how they enforce their own corruption, which is why they can garnish your check and throw you in jail for not paying taxes that they don't deserve. So while people like Nancy Pelosi's husband make money hand over fist through using insider secrets that the politicians keep to themselves, and Ted Cruz goes on vacation in Mexico while he tells all of you to lock down in your homes, and while Gavin Newsom has fancy dinners at French restaurants while millions of his people go without food every day, and every other POS politician in America that does their dirt on a daily basis, a majority of the American population act as their prison guards, their stooges, their Stockholm Syndrome servants. They make sure that anyone who's brave enough to say or do anything about it gets talked out of it as quick as possible. And when I say revolution, I'm not talking about the Purge movies. I'm talking about an intelligent, assertive renegotiation. We are living in a clown world, a zoo. These people are absolute pieces of garbage. And we're still letting them rule over us. Man, I'll tell you, I've seen a lot of TikTok videos this year of people saying that they're not going to be paying their taxes. I am all for not paying the taxes, but until I see the aftermath of how everyone's being affected by not paying the taxes, because I, I don't know, that's pretty scary. I've seen some people not pay their taxes and they've had their wages garnished from their bank account to where they didn't even have enough to pay their bills and they lost a lot of stuff. I don't think I have that in me. I have to pay my taxes because they have the fear over me personally. Kudos to anyone out there that's brave enough to not pay their taxes because I'm curious to see how the system's going to work for them. What do you guys think? Do you guys think that maybe we should no longer be paying taxes? Are you one of the people that did not pay taxes this year because of the movement that everyone's going through? Let me know in the comments because I am extremely interested to see the outcome of all of this. I may have just found the next black swan event. There's a company called CERN and they're the largest particle physics laboratory in the world. And they're most known for officially discovering the God particle in 2012. And I'm not gonna explain what the God particle is. I think the name speaks for itself. But this is where things get interesting. CERN's been shut down all winter because of Europe's energy crisis. And now on April 8th, the day of the longest solar eclipse in decades, they are going to start back up productions. And there's already a million conspiracies about this solar eclipse, but why would a nuclear testing facility start back operations on April 8th? In fact, some cities have already put elite chemical, biological, and nuclear units for places that will see a lot of spectators. Now, I'm not a scientist, and I have no idea what's going on, but it's very odd to me that CERN would pick Friday, April 8th, to start testing back up. And this is the same company that was trying to make a black hole. So if anything happens on April 8th, I'm blaming CERN. I'm not 100% sure. I do not think the eclipse is going to be within alignment with CERN. I don't think they're even going to be able to see it because it's in a whole different country. But it is odd that they're doing it the same day that the eclipse is happening around the world, you know? I wonder, what is the main purpose? Is it because there's going to be a lot of people traveling outside of that country to go witness the solar eclipse and they're just going to have enough energy to do whatever they need to do? Or... Is there something sinister going on behind it? All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. As always, if you are interested in any of the clips, links are down in the description below. And with that being said, have a good day.